Hi, cuties. Anyways, boys, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my Dan to Dan infinite macro that, whoop, I walked into this. That's funny. Infinite macro that will not flippin' break. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. The only time it actually will break, however, is if the developers update the game, you disconnect, or a bunch of other things like that. Those are uncontrollable uh, things, though. But anyways, boys, uh, it, it is quite good, and using this macro allowed me to get close to, like, 23, 24k essence, or wisps, I guess they're called wisps, overnight, which is quite flippin' nice. So anyways, boys, before we talk about the team and everything, here's a quick shout out to my members. Also, Join the discord link is in the description we play the game quite often over there so join it okay this is the team that you are going to need for the macro to get it to work don't worry just because of the fact that i have monarch units does not mean you need monarch units nice thing is when i actually demonstrate this run the run is actually completely done without monarch units actually traitless completely so if you have these six units and you do not have any traits then you'll be completely fine actually five units we don't even need shahin so actually this is the team you only need five units gojo infinity vegeta awakened or vegeta super i guess would be sung jin woo monarch not monarch trait just his evo and tengen flashiness otherwise known as his evo now you don't need these two units specifically but they are helpful and definitely work because i've used them but you could replace them for something like cha Hin. um you could even use toji if you had toji since he's very good alucard works well he's just a little slow and a little bit expensive so maybe use something a little bit cheaper you can even use Julius, if you have him, or even Okarun. Point is, though, the three units you absolutely do need besides Sung Jin Woo and Tengen is Gojo, and he has to be Evoed, Vegeta, and he has to be Evoed as well, and Speed Wagon. Let's jump on over to the demonstration, and we will talk about how to rig it up. I completely forgot that I had a mic fe mute feature directly on my mic. I'm so smart, dude. All right, so I'm going to try to explain this as quickly as I possibly can, and with as little yapping as I possibly can. Probably can't avoid all of it. I don't think I need to say this, but you obviously do need Tiny Task for this. Uh, there will be a link down in the description if you want to install Tiny Task. If you don't have it yet, if you don't have it yet, you are a loser. So the macro is going to start probably right about here, which is how I usually rig it up, but you could start here. It doesn't really matter. So the first starter card that you want to have is no trait, no problem. And you'll always be selecting the card on the left, no matter uh, what it is. So for this macro, what you're going to do is you're going to start off by clicking here, then here, then here then here. As soon as you're done with that, you're going to click up here. And when you click up here, you're going to want to push Q a couple of times in the event that the macro uh, bails and you do fail a run. You want to click it a couple times so that way you can unselect any units that you'll potentially have. Because if you select any units on a failed run, that will actually cross over into the other cycles. So not good. So once you're done clicking on there, you click up here and you click Q, click here a bunch of times. You're then going to click on this and I'm going to click teleport to spawn. When I do that, I'm then going going to walk over here and i'm going to chill on this pathway right in this spot getting as centered as you possibly can will make it a fair amount more consistent but it, it, it's it doesn't have to be perfect so once you're in this stage then i'm going to wait about five to ten seconds on the timer here before i actually start looks like i waited about five seconds honestly that's completely fine you just got to wait a little bit of time just to add a little bit of variation you just want to make sure that there's a little bit of time between you getting into position specifically your avatar and you actually starting the run so as soon as we start the run we're going to select speed wagon and we're going to put one over here this is the one we're going to upgrade when we get our first payout on wave two as you can see i grab the speed wagon and place them over here for the sake of getting them ready to place them down we're gonna place the second speed wagon down but what we're gonna do is we're immediately going to place them down we're gonna click up here again by the way make sure to have your chat off so you don't accidentally uh click on chat and goof everything up and then once we do that then we're gonna come back down here we're gonna select the speed wagon and spam the t key and we're doing it on the first speed wagon that we placed in the event that we actually select the monarch modifier so again play speed wagon down click up here select the first one spam t and we're going to upgrade them once before the payout and once after the payout as you can see now i have grabbed vegeta and have kind of set my cursor in position on where i'm going to be placing him a good rule of thumb is to place him a little bit of distance away from the pathway but not too too far away from the pathway to the point where the speed wagons become in range of the vegetas doing that will remove his passive and that is not good you want that passive so when we get that wave three payout, the first initial payout, not like the actual speed wagon payout, because there's two different payouts, which I should specify. We're going to place down 
our first Vegeta. We're gonna place down our second Vegeta. And then when we get the speed wagon payout, we're gonna place down the third Vegeta, right about in the same spot. Selecting the leftmost card. Again, we're always gonna be selecting the leftmost card. And I also go to pick up the fourth Vegeta and set him into place. So when I get a little bit more money, we are gonna put him down. So there's the fourth Vegeta. So all four Vegetas are kind of covering in the back. So as you can see, we placed down the fourth Vegeta. But what we're immediately going to do after this is we're going to pick up a Gojo and place him over in this spot right here. We're going to be putting the two other Vegetas right here, but we're also about to move our avatar up to here, to here, to here, and over here, and to a couple other spots for the sake of picking up the very first talisman. So we're going to move our character up to here first. What you can do is you can use your left hand to move around with the WSAD keys and have your right hand spam the E key. We're going to walk up here and we're also going to walk in circles around here because because the talisman spawn can be a little bit different. I like to kind of walk in a circle, spin around, maybe walk in like a little bit of an infinity symbol or an eight symbol, just so I make sure that entire area is covered. All spamming the E key, by the way. You can even do it through the entire path if you wanted to. I don't do that because, you know, tiny task is a little bit goofy at times, but we went from here, we went to here, then we go to here, then we're going to here. Then from here, we're gonna walk over here. And I actually like to walk in a zigzag pattern for this one. Then we're gonna go from there. We're gonna walk across our speed wagons over to beside this tree this is great right in our face oh my gosh same basic premise we're just gonna walk into a uh, massive area then we're gonna come over here by this planter that side of the planter this side of the planter and then we're gonna walk directly to the right to this crate over here and this is actually where our talisman in this run was located but there's one on this side of the towel of the of the crate it can actually be on top of the crate too or i think even like right next to it another spawn is like right here next to the building in this general area you'll want to walk around in this area a little bit and then we're gonna walk all the way down here all while spamming e i think the talisman can spawn behind this possibly in this area too now once you come over to here if you don't have the talisman yet you are going to fail the run and this is going to be a failed run there's unfortunately no way around this if it was a monarch unit run where you actually had access to the monarch trade in this run it wouldn't be that big of a deal because the monarch units could carry but once you're here you're going to click up here and there's a good reason why i'll explain in a moment you're gonna come down here click the gear click teleport to spawn click back up in that little area and then as soon as you teleport you're going to use the talisman now if you look at this you will see that there's actually a couple of the serpons that got very close to my base editing salty here as soon as you get over to this spot it would be a good idea to use the talisman right away I actually rigged up the macro that you saw in the video there and it was dang close on the successful run to the point where I actually kept on failing runs afterwards. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of headache so you don't have to like re-rig up the macro, maybe use the talisman as soon as you get to this spot over here and it'll just save you like a bit of effort. But the reason why you click up here and then teleport to spawn is because on the fail screen, there is this little button which allows you to click it to close the fail or even victory menu screen which if you do not close this, you will not be able to teleport. That is very important. After you use the talisman, you're gonna walk back over to the pathway here. You're gonna select two more Gojos and you're gonna put them in place there. I usually do a little bit of a pyramid uh, pattern there. And this is also where I place down my Sungjin, Wu, and Tengen. And I also upgrade Speedwagon a little bit because a little bit of extra money is always helpful. Okay, my bad. I guess on wave six-ish, I place down my Tengen. Again, Sungjin, Wu, and Tengen are both my Monarch units. You don't need Monarch units for this. This is just incredibly convenient for me. And to note once more, this run is a no trait, no problem run. So there is no trait on these guys whatsoever. Just pretty good stats. All right, so wave six is when I place down my Tengen. Okay, tiny mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> But once you get Tengen down and you get Sungjin Wu down, then it's a good idea to go and upgrade your Gojos a little bit. I'm not quite able to upgrade them on this wave because I did use a little bit of, little bit of my money to, uh, to place down Tengen. Okay, wave seven now, and I will keep my cursor still so you guys can see properly. Everything's holding pretty well. I think at this point, it's a good idea to upgrade either your Sungjin Wu or your Gojos a fair amount. You can do either or. I just did my Sungjin Wu because again, Monarch unit. And to reiterate, because a lot of you guys probably didn't listen, while Sungjin Wu is my Monarch unit, in this run, he doesn't have the Monarch trait. No trait, no problem. So he's a regular unit. Anyways, wave eight. This is when we're going to go walk around and grab the talisman for this round. So I waited a little bit. It's not as important to get the talisman. We are going to use it on wave 10, but they spawn on wave eight. So you can go get them at any point. So at this point, I upgrade my Gojo a little bit more. I walk up here, walking in a little bit of a obscure pattern. Looks like I kind of did a little bit of a zigzag pattern this time. Again, spamming E. I went to those three spots on the side of the building. 
Walked over, still spamming E. Zigzag pattern right next to the deck. Walked across by my speed wagons, went over by the tree. Again, a little bit of a zigzag pattern, although I think it was a little bit high up, but this was like smooth. I went right to the planter. Left side of the planter, right side of the planter, left side of the box. Again, making sure you can see the side of the box. Right side of the box, right in front of the other tree, which is behind the building, straight behind the building, and pause. Hey, before we continue, I just want to jump in here real quick and say that if this video has helped you out in any way, then make sure to not only like the video, but also subscribe for more. I have a ton of Anime Vanguards videos planned on the way, so if you like Anime Vanguards and you want to learn more from this game, then hey, subscribe, turn notifications on, like the video, helps the channel out a ton, and it is greatly appreciated. Thank you, boys. All right, let's continue. It's about this time where you can select your card, I think. I think the game might select the card automatically if you aren't quick enough, so it's not that big of a deal. But we always select the left one because it's, it's just it's just a little bit easier. So we click on it, and again we click the the top button here. We come down here, so click the gear, teleport to spawn, click up here again, and we just walk over to the thing again. Now you can use the talisman on wave nine if you really wanted to. I used mine on wave ten because I was actually doing pretty good. These guys in this run got incredibly close close as well, but that's just kind of how it is. Now, I would actually recommend not placing any units in this spot here. I did for Cha Han. However, that is not a good idea because that is like right in line with the replay button, which will mess you up. So do not use any units on basically the right side of this pathway. Do not do this. So once I got to wave 10, I used the talisman. Again, you can use the talisman on wave nine if you absolutely want to. Only the serpons are left, which these guys are not an issue. They're gonna be going away once we restart the run. When the first boss spawns, this is kind of our cue to get ready to restart. So what I am about to do right now is I'm about to pull up the gear menu. I'm going to click on restart match and I'm gonna hover my mouse over yes. You can click there a couple times if you have a little bit of a slower PC. And we're going to wait for a couple of signs. The first one is when we actually switch over to wave 11, giving us a little bit more of a payout of essence. And two, when we see the boss get closer to our units. You can kind of see her here in the side. Yeah, the uh, turbo grandma. When she starts getting closer to where our units will actually start attacking her, that's when we're going to restart the run completely. So I wait a little bit. It just went to wave 11. She starts getting closer. And we restart right about now. Ow. There it is. Okay, we restart, we click cancel, and we immediately close this. Then once we're done with that, then the macro is completely over. So that's my uh, unbreakable macro. Uh, again, don't place Chahi in here. That will break it. Don't do not do that. Just, just don't. All right, I'm going to demonstrate this macro in action. So boys, enjoy.
By the way, if you have not seen my Peeny Weenie character overview video yet, then make sure to go watch it by clicking on it right here. He's a really good unit from the Dan to Dan update, so make sure to get him if you want, but go learn about him by clicking on this video right here. Dismissed!